Welcome back to Unwrap for an inside look at kid cravings. And here's a crazy candy that uh, kind of comes in handy. It's called spray candy, and you can find it in flavors like very cherry <laughs> and good and hot green apple. Now, how do they come up with these tastes? Let's find out the secrets and uh, how it's made. Mm. There's candy you can chew, chomp, crunch, and even suck. But have you ever seen a candy you can spray? Now kids can squirt a sweet surprise directly into their mouths. There's only one catch. Too tart spray candy is just that, too tart. Before spring, you had better be prepared for some serious sour. Ooh! Ooh, was that good, huh? Wow, I like it. <laughs> spray candy was created about five years ago. And it actually started as a liquid candy where it came in a little bottle and kids would squeeze that bottle and the drops would come out on their tongue. The company claims it was the first liquid candy for kids. Then when we came out with the spray bottle concept, that's when the product really took hold. This dramatically different dispenser gives two tarts total tongue coverage. One little spray covers all the taste buds in your mouth. To come up with their super sour flavors, Two Tarts Flavor Doctor heads into the lab. Which is like a great big huge kitchen with just thousands of different seasonings in there. And that's where the fun starts. Crazy new flavor concoctions get mixed up. If we're making a flavor like watermelon, there may be 50 ingredients that go into that flavor for the end result. And it is very much like cooking because you keep adding and changing a little bit until you get it just the way you think you want it. Then the new recipe is ready for taste testing. Cheers. Each creation gets critiqued. I think what it needs is a little bit more, on the very end of it, a little bit more sweetness. Then the candy gets revised and retested. Once the taste is too tart, the recipe is ready for the factory. Workers carefully measure all the ingredients before mixing up a gigantic 2,000 gallon batch. With one individual spray product, we'll use probably about 250 tons of just sugar a year. A powerful propeller blends everything together. When the candy is done, samples are taken and tested to ensure they precisely match the two tarts formula. Okay. Finally, the sugar solution is ready for its unique container. Bottles are placed in holes on a circular filling machine. The candy is injected and then the spray cap is placed on top. It gets a final twist and turn from the torque machine. Next, the two tarts label slides over the top of the tube and gets shrink wrapped around the bottle. Spray candy might be a new concept for grown-ups, but its sour power is spreading. What's amazing to me is that the age group for tart has grown so much from young kids that are three and four years old to adults that are in their 40s and 50s. I believe the concept of tart is addictive like hot sauce or chocolate. Spray candy might just be the next condiment craze. But kids, you know, they don't like broccoli. Boy, spray a little of that two tarts on your broccoli and it's palatable. <laughs> Another fun gadget that makes food a little more interactive is this. It's the push pop. Kids always go for ice cream anyway, but add a clever container and it's fun to hang on to as well. So we're going to take an inside look at how these totally tubular treats are pumped out. It's as easy as popping, pushing, and pigging out. That's good. Push pops are so simple, almost anyone can operate them, even without a learner's permit. There you go, Madeline. Push pops are sort of a popsicle minus the mess. Well, you don't get it as much on clothes. It's not as messy as maybe some other products, like ice cream bars or popsicles that could melt. I got it over my pants. This tube will hold the product more intact. Keep it colder, too. I, uh, while a child's eating it. Blue Bunny makes its own version of the push pop called a cool tube. 
It's a real kid's product. They like it because it's interactive. They have to do something with it before they can eat it. Moms like cool tubes because they're low-fat sherbet tucked into a tidy tube. It's a very portable package. You can push it up and you can lick it and you don't have to use a spoon to eat it or anything like that. Making cool tubes is almost as cool as eating them. First workers use a nifty little device to lift a dozen empty tubes onto the line at one time. Next, the tubes are filled with three flavors of sherbet. Orange, cherry, and lemon lime create a fruity rainbow. Caps roll off a wheel, covering each freshly filled tube, then they're stacked end-to-end -end for boxing. Robots quickly assemble the boxes and push the tubes inside. Next, the tubes go in search of their cool. They find it inside a frosty 40 below freezer. The cool tubes are frozen solid and ready for shipping. Blue Bunny makes about 15 million cool tubes every year. That should keep the kids chilled out. Welcome back to Unwrapped. In our look at kid cravings, candy always tops the list, whether it's a simple candy bar or a more unconventional confection. Kids these days are finding some pretty wacky combos like, hmm, worms and dirt. And we're digging into the latest candy craze right now. Kids go for gross. Gross. Sometimes the grosser, the better. I love worms. And what could be grosser than worms? Worms in dirt? Coco's Confections creates this deliciously disgusting duo, and although it may cause grown-ups to gag, kids can't seem to get enough of this gross grub. More worms and dirt. Boys and girls just, for whatever reason, like playing in mud. I know my kids just, they can't seem to get enough of mud and insects and all sorts of yucky things, and they just like worms and dirt. <laughs> The worms in this mud pie are actually just gummy worms, and the dirt, well, it's crushed cookies. This may just be the only time parents allow kids to binge on bugs. I know a lot of kids will be eating their worms and dirt, and the next thing you know, you see mom and dad reaching for it and grabbing a worm and eating the dirt, and then everybody's eating worms and dirt. Here's the inside scoop on how Coco's digs up this disturbing delicacy. First, piles of worms are released from their bags and pulled apart. Precisely three worms are packed into each cup. Meanwhile, broken chocolate cookies are scooped into a grinder where they are crushed into the consistency of dirt. Each cup of worms is then buried under a scoop of the dark chocolatey dust. The filled cups are fitted into holes on a rotating machine that seals them and pops out the finished product. Coco's calls worms and dirt the best bait you ever ate. Mmm, mmm, that was, that was one good worm. 